There was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams. And uh, she was practically burned at the stake for um, talking about such. He said something fabulous and he goes, yo, <laughs> no, we, no, but me and you, we ain't party. Like, we need to party. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yo, yo. What is he talking about? Dad, now, would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> you Hell know? no. Rapper Sean Diddy Combs has been trailed by a slew of allegations since he first burst onto the scene with his record label, Bad Boys Records. The former Uptown Records intern has been accused of mistreating women, sleeping with men against their will, his victims, organizing orgies, and doing However, these allegations never stuck as none of his alleged victims ever came forward or spoke up, nor was there any shred of evidence to support the claims. Diddy himself has denied these allegations on multiple occasions, claiming innocence and usually wearing white suits to illustrate it. However, his accusers wouldn't give up. They kept throwing one allegation after the other despite significant backlash from Diddy's fans and the occasional subtle threats from the man himself. Eventually, the accusers appear to have been vindicated as some of his victims have finally gotten the courage to step up and tell their stories. Though nothing has been proven yet, the stories seem to match what Diddy's accusers have been saying for years. The recent raid on Diddy's home by Homeland Security also lends credence to the allegations that have trailed the mogul for the past three decades. Maybe if fans and security agencies alike had listened to these accusers and conducted investigations into Diddy, many more alleged victims would have been saved. In today's video, we listen to when the likes of Cassie, Usher, Tupac, 50 Cent, and Wendy Williams warned us about the Diddy curse, but we never listened. First up is Cassie. Many fans argue that Diddy's current issues with the Fed started from the singer and former Sini of Bad Boy Records. Last year, Cassie sued Diddy for forcing her to sleep with male S workers, taking illegal substances, subjecting her to inhumane treatment, and hitting her on several occasions, but she didn't stop there. According to the Me and You crooner, Diddy signed her to his record label, Bad Boy, and plied the vulnerable Ms. Ventura with and causing her to fall into dangerous addictions that controlled her life. Diddy's former protege accused him of controlling every aspect of her life, including what she should wear, where she could go, who she could see, and how to style her hair. Other allegations include filming her while she slept with different males and touching himself during the entire episode. She also claimed the music mogul once dangled her friend from the balcony of a 17-story building when the two got involved in a heated argument. The lawsuit also alleged that the Bad Boy Records founder blew up Kid Cootie's car when he found out that he was dating Cassie during their on-and-off relationship. It also suggested Diddy claimed he would target the Better Place rapper in retaliation for dating his then ex-girlfriend. According to the suit, around that time, Kid Cootie's car exploded in his driveway. In a statement released to the New York Times through his spokesperson, Cootie confirmed Cassie's account by saying, This is all true. In an interview with the Times, Cassie said, It became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life. Cassie was taking advantage of New York State's adult survivor Act, which allowed victims of S.A. and R. in the 1990s to seek recompense against their perpetrators. The act gave a one-month window for all victims to sue their perpetrators, barring the statutes of limitations. Cassie's accusations were met with lots of skepticism, as many fans thought she was making things up. Others felt she had fallen off the pecking order in celebrity status. Thus, she wanted to cook up a storm to stay relevant. Some fans also felt that the 37-year-old mother of one had run out of money and wanted to scoop a few million from the rap mogul to cushion her lifestyle. Conversely, others thought her story dovetailed perfectly into what people have been saying for years. Therefore, they believed her. Meanwhile, Diddy denied all of Cassie's allegations, insisting that he was innocent. In a statement released through his lawyer, Benjamin Braffman, Diddy claimed the allegations were riddled with baseless lies and outrageous accusations. He claimed that Cassie Ventura had been trying to extort some money from Diddy for the past six months, threatening to write a book that would damage his reputation if her demands were not met. He explained that the singer was trying to secure the bag on the back of the allegations. The statement read, For the past six months, Mr. Combs has been subjected to Miss Ventura's persistent demand of $30 million, under the threat of writing a damaging book about their relationship, which was unequivocally rejected as blatant blackmail. Despite withdrawing her initial threat, Miss Ventura has now resorted to filing a lawsuit riddled with baseless and outrageous lies, aiming to tarnish Mr. Combs' reputation and seeking a payday. However, Douglas Wigdor, Cassie's lawyer, insisted 
insisted that Diddy offered his client some money to make the case go away, but she was adamant. He said, Mr. Combs offered Miss Ventura eight figures to silence her and prevent the filing of this lawsuit. She rejected his effort. However, in a sharp U-turn, Diddy curiously opted for an out-of-court settlement, with many fans believing he agreed to pay the full $30 million. In a quick follow-up message, Diddy's lawyer announced that the settlement wasn't an admission of guilt. We have decided to resolve this matter amicably, the statement issued on November 18th read. I wish Cassie and her family all the best. Love. Some fans explained that the out-of-court settlement allowed Diddy to avoid new, likely damaging evidence that could be brought forward during the process of legal discovery. Just so we're clear, a decision to settle a lawsuit, especially in 2023, is in no way an admission of wrongdoing, Ben Braffman said in a statement on November 20th. Mr. Combs' decision to settle the lawsuit does not in any way undermine his flat-out denial of the claims. He is happy they got to a mutual settlement and wishes Miss Ventura the best. However, the statement seemed to be a little too late, as fans had already made up their minds. They concluded that Diddy's settlement was an admission of guilt, and they started to see Diddy in a negative light. A few days after Cassie's lawsuit, about five more women came up with similar allegations against Diddy, some with pictures to prove their case. And since then, P. Diddy hasn't known peace as more victims, including some men, have stepped forward, detailing several sordid activities that allegedly took place at Diddy's house. Interestingly, before Cassie told us through the lawsuit about Diddy's wild parties, Usher had already given us hints. In an interview with radio personality and talent judge Howard Stern, Usher claimed that he saw a few things at Diddy's house, which he wasn't sure whether it was appropriate to participate. You I went it. there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, and it was, <laughs> but I don't know indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was it was pretty wild. So no R&B singer Usher Raymond was discovered when he was just 13 years old and sent to live with Diddy in the so-called Puffy's Flavor Camp for about a year. There, he saw some wild stuff that was probably inappropriate for a young man his age. He told Howard Stern, I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle and I saw it. It was pretty wild. It was crazy. The My Boo crooner continued that he felt like a little brother at the time. They called me Baby Boo, he recalled. Commenting on his relationship with Diddy, he added, he wasn't disciplinary, he was letting me be a young man. Usher went on to describe him as family. He was always a family member from afar, so I never felt a disconnection, he said. I will always look at him like a brother. When asked whether he would send his kids to Puffy Flavor Camp, Usher emphatically answered, hell no. Curiously, this video recently resurfaced when music producer Rodney Jones Jr., alias Lil Rod, filed a lawsuit against Diddy, accusing him of S.A.N.R. The lawsuit filed in New York alleged that the music mogul laced Jones' drinks with illicit substances and forced him into several degrading s -act. The producer who worked on Diddy's latest album indicated that he attended one of Diddy's parties where he was given a drink and passed out. When he woke up, he realized he was with a woman who he suspects was an S worker lying by him. In the lengthy lawsuit obtained by our team, Rodney claimed that Diddy tried to get him into his bed, but he was adamant. He claimed that Diddy boasted of having slept with some men in the industry, including a singer who recently performed at the Super Bowl and had a Las Vegas residency. Though the lawsuit stopped short of mentioning the name of the singer, fans concluded that it could be Usher. For starters, the R&B star recently performed at the Super Bowl and celebrated his Las Vegas residency. Fans have long suspected Diddy of having an affair with Usher, and interestingly, both men have never denied it. Instead, available evidence suggests that both men could be an item. In the wake of the Diddy Usher allegations mentioned in the lawsuit, fans d an old video of Diddy talking about waking up on the same bed with the My Way singer. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and I mean, damn, pause, but like, that's out. I mean, I mean. When he realized he had goofed and had exposed his relationship with Usher, Diddy backtracked. He then claimed Usher was his brother from when he was little, and the two used to wrestle over frosted flakes. However, Kevin Hart, the host of the event, recognized Puffy's tongue slip and called him out for it. Fans also caught Diddy's apparent tongue slip and deduced that the bad boy CEO probably had an affair with Usher when he was young and living with him. They claimed that Diddy's statement explains why Usher told Howard Stern crazy and wild things went down at Diddy's house. One commenter noted, he tries to clean up, we used to wake up together, with we used to wrestle over frosted flakes. P. Diddy, LMAO. Who says that S, even if he was really your brother, he gay? Another also commented, funny how he tries to clown Kevin for getting too close to the bed and then right after that says he and Usher used to wake up together. That's a Freudian slip right there. A few bottles of bubbly will have you spilling the truth. 
Some fans thought that the universe aligned perfectly to elicit a confession from Diddy. They wrote, The elements was perfect, the frequency of confession was there, and the hypocrisy was open while the comedian was available to complete the energy, one of the best alignment of energy ever. However, sharp fans like this one carefully noted the rapper's use of words. They wrote, Diddy said, We used to wrestle off of the frosted flakes. He didn't say over the frosted flake. Wow. Then there were the fans who refused to be fooled into thinking that Diddy and Usher were just kidding. They were convinced in their heart of hearts that the two were closeted gay partners who feared the repercussions of the rap and black community should they come out. One of them commented, Somebody tell these dudes they're not fooling anybody. Usher used to live with the guys who helped his career get off the ground. He was underage and his mom was not always around. Interestingly, many people didn't make much of Usher's interview with Howard Stern. At the time, the general perception was that Diddy was easing up the youngster into the celebrity lifestyle. Thus, he had to expose himself to a side of the lifestyle so that he became accustomed to it. Many thought the rap mogul was teaching Usher the ropes of the industry. But little did they know that Diddy was probably sleeping with him. Watching the Usher's interview with Howard Stern with the backdrop of recent allegations made against him, one can tell that he was trying to warn us about the rap mogul. Another celebrity whose warnings even go further back than Usher is the legendary rapper Tupac Shakur. Tupac, who was heavily involved in the bitter, deadly East Coast-West Coast rivalry, suspected that Diddy was behind his incarceration and shooting shooting in Manhattan. At the time, Tupac was being tried for SA and hitting a police officer and was facing about nine months in prison if convicted. Sources claim he didn't have enough money on him to go through the trial, so he was granting verses on mixtapes and features to whip up some cash. Thus, he got invited to feature on a song to be recorded at the Quad Studios in Manhattan. On his way to the studios, he heard familiar voices from the top floor of the story building that housed the studios. When he looked, he recognized Lil Cease of the rap group Junior Mafia, affiliated with Bad Boy Records. Joel Anderson, a writer for the Slate website, once recounted the episode on the Slow Burn podcast. Tupac's walking around the corner, and he hears some familiar voices from several stories above. The people yelling at him were Lil Cease and members of Biggie's affiliate rap group, Junior Mafia. They were all excited to see each other. Lil Cease runs down to the lobby to meet Tupac. However, the rapper encountered what many believe to be a hit squad in the lobby. A struggle ensued between the rapper and the three men armed with a Narrating the incident as told by Tupac himself, the rapper Spice One said, he said he grabbed a guy's gun, and they were struggling back and forth. They both paused, went to shoot, and then he started pulling, he looked at him in the face, and then he started struggling again. Dude shot again, and then shot one more time, and that's when he shot him in the groin area. He said, you know, that's when I fell to the ground. The incident left Tupac hospitalized for a couple of days. The rapper then blamed his former best friend Biggie Smalls, Diddy, and the Bad Boy record label for the shooting. The incident divided the hip-hop community and sparked the now infamous rivalry that allegedly cost the lives of prominent rappers such as Tupac and Biggie Smalls. Tupac's incident closely mirrors another shooting incident involving Diddy that recently took place in another recording studio in Los Angeles. According to the suit filed by Rodney Jones Jr., Diddy and his son Justin Combs accosted a rapper in the bathroom of Chalice Recording Studios a few years ago. During a heated argument between the said rapper Diddy and his Justin, shots were fired from the studio's bathroom. Lil Rod and the people present at the time of the incident rushed to the bathroom only to find the victim crouching on the floor with blood flowing down his leg. Diddy and his son Justin were also seen standing next to the victim, looking perplexed. Lil Rod then claimed Diddy told him and the others to inform the police the shooting happened outside the studios. When the police arrived, they checked the entire studio and concluded that the incident was a robbery gone wrong and that it didn't happen within the studio's premises. Later, several news outlets covered the story, indicating that Diddy and Justin Combs were victims of an attempted robbery that resulted in the shooting of a bystander. The supposed robbers were subsequently identified and arrested to cover up for Diddy's alleged crime. On how Diddy was able to get law enforcement to side with him, Lil Rod alleged that the rap mogul had a fixer named Fahim Muhammad, who had strong links with the security agencies. He once recalled Diddy telling him and his staff that they shouldn't hesitate to contact Fahim whenever they ran into difficulty with the police in New York and Los Angeles. So, Tupac might not have been far from right when he suspected that Diddy was behind his shooting in the Manhattan studios. Curiously, Homeland Security found various types of firearms during the recent raid on Diddy's home in New York and Los Angeles. So Tupac probably did warn us about Diddy about 30 years ago, but one celeb who might not have given us explicit warnings but dropped various hints about Diddy's lifestyle is 50 Cent. He said something fabulous and he goes, yo, no, we, no, but me and you, we ain't party. Like, we need to party. No, but we ain't never really party, you know what I'm saying? I
<laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. What is he talking about? The candy shop rapper used to be business partners with the CEO of Bad Boy Entertainment. We can't say they were the best of friends, but they got along quite well until they fell out. The genesis of the feud isn't clear, but 50 Cent has been stepping on Diddy's neck for a few years now. He's made several wild allegations against the rapper and trolled him on social media at the least opportunity. For example, a recent post from the Many Men rapper shows a pic on Instagram of Tupac and Suge Knight the night of Tupac's with the caption, Damn so Pac got lined by brother love. LOL time to lawyer up. S might get sticky. A few days later, Fiddy clowned Diddy on his alleged links with Keith D, the man suspected to have pulled the trigger on Tupac. He then posted a short video on Instagram of Keith D asking Diddy for help. Brother love, show some love. It's all I can effing say, Keith D said in the clip. I was on top of the world till I met your you. Aside from clowning the founder of Bad Boy Records, 50 Cent has openly but subtly accused Diddy of being during the last lap of his latest European tour, the Inda Club hitmaker explained why he didn't like attending Diddy's exclusive all-white parties. The elated 50 thanked the crowd for coming for his show, then quickly descended into throwing shades at his eternal enemy. Nah, uh, he said from the stage, that man hug you from the front and the back at the same time? F you talking about? I mean, if you into that, you into that. I'm fine with it. I'm just saying this ain't my m kind of party. I'm uncomfortable. I think I belong in the girls' bathroom. Curiously, this was the second time 50 Cent was alluding to Diddy's S. The rapper had earlier indicated that Diddy was when a picture of Lil Baby hugging two men from the front and the back started making rounds on the internet. The picture was taken at Michael Rubin's all-white party hosted in Atlanta. 50 then posted the picture and added the following caption. See, this is why I don't go to no party puffy and them at. Day F is going on here. Get the F off my young man. When asked about his issues with 50 Cent, Diddy did not respond to this particular social media post, but he has spoken about the In Da Club rapper in previous interviews. I don't have no beef with Fifth. He loves me. He told The Breakfast club in 2018. Y'all can't see that he loves me? You really think that's hate? You know he loves me. However, 50 didn't see it that way, as he kept on trolling Diddy and throwing jabs at him. In an interview on Drink Champs, 50 said Diddy asked him to go shopping with him, but he felt there were other intentions behind it. He told the hosts, so yo, when we gonna get a chance to kick it, we could just hang out. Why don't we like go shopping? I'll pay for it, Fifth recalled Diddy telling him. Of course, the hosts burst into laughter at 50's words. Perhaps many people thought the rapper was just being funny. But little did they know that the candy shop rapper was hinting at Diddy's true nature, though 50 resorted to giving clues. One celebrity who didn't mince her words when she cautioned us about the I'll be missing you rapper is Wendy Williams. Wendy is one of the first people to have ever lifted the lid on the alleged secret life of Diddy, then known as Puff Daddy. Even at the peril of life, the former radio personality went all out to expose Puffy, calling him a closeted and a control freak. In fact, it was Wendy who first broke the news that Diddy was on radio in the early 2000s. According to the former TV host, she had a picture of Diddy getting his pants pulled down by a man on the beach. She even threatened to release the picture to the general public, but little did she know that that threat would be her undoing. Wendy, who has never shied away from celebrity gossip, recounted when Diddy sent his all-girl music band, Total, to teach her a lesson. She said, I got off the air one day, them total bitches were downstairs, and everybody upstairs at the radio station was looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. She explained that her boyfriend at the time prevented the whole situation from turning ugly by escorting her out of the building. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, claimed during an interview with Art of the Dialogue that Puff caused the sack of Wendy Williams from Hot 97 because she was exposing him. He detailed how Diddy called the radio station's management and threatened to cut business ties with them if they didn't fire Williams. The power Combs had with the radio stations in New York, people didn't breathe hard if Combs didn't want them to. Combs got one of the hottest DJs off Hot 97 because she wanted to put up a picture of him getting his pants pulled down, Deal said. Combs told Hot 97 if they didn't get rid of her before he got back in New York, that they was not going to get any music from any of his friends, any of the record label's executives that was cool with him, everyone was going to boycott their station. He then continued that Diddy had Wendy fired less than three days after her warning to leak the said picture. We was out in LA for about three days, Deal added. Before we landed back in New York, Wendy Williams was in the radio station in Philly. It was over for her. She was fired. Williams co-signed Jean Deal's words when she granted an interview with DJ V Ladd, claiming that she was burned at the stake for exposing the hip-hop mogul. There was a radio personality once upon a time. Her name was Wendy Williams, and she was practically burned at the stake for talking about such. Now it's all come full circle, Williams said. There were many situations back in my career, and it's all coming full circle.
Years later, Wendy Williams would expose the brutal side of Diddy when she once said that the business mogul was controlling Cassie Ventura. During Diddy and Cassie's 2015 breakup, Wendy Williams, who initially rooted for the pair, decried how Diddy was treating the singer. She said on her talk show, My thing about when you date a mogul, it's a really difficult thing to avoid them, because if you use your head, you never know when they'll pop up on the scene, Williams told her studio audience, saying the activity would frighten her. He can hire a plane right now, land on the roof of the hotel she's staying, pay people off at the front desk, give me a key, and let me up in her room. Five years later, Wendy Williams appears to have been vindicated, as Cassie sued Diddy for S.A.R. and exhibiting controlling behavior. Now that the feds have opened investigations into the founder of Bad Boys Records, there's no telling what they'd find. But one thing is for sure, these five celebrities have long warned us about Diddy, and if the investigations prove their suspicions, we would have been better off listening to them. This draws the curtains on today's video. Thanks for watching.